Hi everybody, this is Paul from Zosa Games. In this video I'll be looking at the inspiration for the futuristic firearms that feature in the hostile setting book. So let's have a look. There we go, page 177. Uh, this is where we list the common ammunition types in the setting. I think uh, that this was important it gave an extra level of realism to begin with building the guns from the ammunition upwards. Okay, so let's look at the handguns first. My main inspiration for the guns in this setting came from two main sources. The 1986 movie Aliens and the Verhoeven movie Total Recall that was made a few years later. You can see on this page a customised micro Uzi. There. This was used by the team that pursued uh, Doug Quaid in Total Recall and it's a real world gun used in the movie uh, and that film is in fact packed with real world guns. Being a real firearm means that I can drop it easily into the game, there's no sort of copyright issues there treading on people's uh, IP. And the same goes for the two Red Hawk pistols uh, down here. These are based off of the uh, Gonch semi-automatic pistol that's also used in Total Recall. There were prototypes of this 9mm pistol uh, available when the movie was made, around 100 uh, copies were, 100 um, examples were floating around at the time. But by 1993 the company had been shut down. I think, do think they're a fabulously futuristic design, I do like them a lot. Above the Red Hawks you can see our Stern VP90 and I'm sure even the name will give that away, you'll recognise this famous pistol as the Heckler & Koch VP70. Um, it's a very futuristic looking pistol from the 1970s and the 1980s that was carried by uh, Lieutenant Gorman in the movie Aliens. The VP70 in real life was the world's first polymer framed handgun. I think it predated the Glock 17 by 10 or 12 years and unusually it featured a double stacked magazine giving it a capacity of 18 rounds. Most interesting of all is the M military variant which uh, allowed for three round bursts. Production of this gun stopped at the end of the, of the 1980s but it's still very iconic. The odd one out on this page is the M44 revolver. This is an Ian Stead design that's based on the famous LAPD 2019 blaster carried by Rick Deckard in the movie Blade Runner. Now that prop was a uh, real Frankenstein's monster made up of a Charter Arms Bulldog revolver mated to the receiver of a Steyr Mannlicher rifle and then decorated with side covers, LEDs, uh, all kinds of little extras there. So that's our version and it roughly resembles the, uh, the Blade Runner version. Okay, turning to page 181, we have our cutting edge military rifle, the M24 Advanced Combat Rifle. It fires discarding sabre rounds that are caseless and has a 60 round capacity. It includes a sophisticated scope with infrared light intensification and it boasts a four shot integral grenade launcher. Of course, it, obvious, the inspiration for this firearm is the famous M41 pulse rifle as used by the Colonial Marines in the Aliens movie. This gun needs no introduction. We created something similar but ours is in a bullpup configuration. Uh, the pulse rifle in the movie was actually an old Thompson submachine gun with an attached Remington 870 shotgun at the front and then heavily, very heavily futurized if, if that's a real word. Of course the grenades it fired were shotgun shell sized because they had to fit inside the Remington shotgun. We stuck with 30mm uh, grenades for our rifle. Over the page we can see uh, a carbine version of our M24 ACR and a hunting rifle of our own design. At the top of the page though you'll see the SA-66 bullpup rifle. In our world, in our setting, it's a mass-produced civilian a military firearm used by uh, off-world colonies in great quantities. It's a rugged, compact and reliable 
weapon, um, and its design is taken from a Total Recall uh, weapon, where the uh, Ruger AC556 rifles are seen in the movie being carried by Mars security forces. So we've based it on that Ruger AC556 rifle. It's a radically cut down version of the classic 1950s rifle, the battle rifle, the M14. And it's a military variant with full auto capability and a folding stock. This is the real life Ruger AC556. Uh, but to make it more futuristic, it has this modified muzzlet bullpup stock wraparound feature um, that has a carry handle and a shortened barrel and has moved the magazine into a bullpup position. And you can still buy these futuristic bullpup upgrades for your Ruger for uh, less than $150 today. There's, a, there's another total recall example on the next page. Our Hoplite combat shotgun is just the Mossberg 500 bullpup shotgun that was also used by Martian troops in the in the film. This is still a, bump, a pump action. The the Mossberg 500 is still a pump action 12 gauge shotgun, but it has the futuristic look. Our Hoplite is capable of burst fire and includes a top mounted accessory rail. So our our Hoplite is a sort of combat version of the Mossberg 500. The uh, next two firearms, inspired by examples from film, are both shotguns. There's our Noricum Stakeout and the Stern 2000. The Stakeout is just the modern day Ithaca 37. Well, I say modern, it's very, very old design now. And it's pulled straight out of Aliens, where Hicks like to keep it handy for personal encounters. Our Stern 2000 shotgun, it's a version of the, it's a copy of the modern day Browning 2000. And it's in the configuration that it appears in the movie Outland. In that film, Sean Connery, as well as his deputies, use the gun with a sawed off barrel and a very, very cut down stock, like a pistol grip almost. Even the bad guys in the movie bring along Browning 2000s with them to Io and try and assassinate our hero with it. If I show you the uh, movie poster for Outland, you'll notice that the shotgun carried by the Marshal, Sean Connery there, is not a Browning 2000 though. In fact, it's a Winchester 1912, uh, a gun that does not appear in a single frame of the movie. Very interesting. Underneath the Stern 2000, you can see our version of Aliens M56 smart gun, which we uh, call the M3 Hydra IMAG, intelligent machine gun auto guiding. And like the M56 from Aliens, our version, the M3, it's a squad support gun mounted on a steady mount harness. For the movie, the smart guns were built up from working World War II German MG42 machine guns, quite amazingly. However, they were heavily disguised with accessories. Uh, motorbike parts. It's real ingenious work on the part of the movie's armourer, Simon Atherton, I think. Right, also inspired by Aliens is our MLT flame unit, which is roughly based on the Marines M240 flamethrowers from Alien. From Aliens. Now the movie version worked for real and it was built superficially out of parts of M16A1 rifles uh, as well as if you, if you look at the design in the film uh, the handguards from M203 grenade launchers um, they're so iconic for the film we just we had to have a flamethrower in the game you, you've just got you've got to for this genre the final firearm in the setting book that was inspired by a real-world weapon is our G6 grenade launcher. It doesn't fit underneath a rifle barrel, it's not an under barrel launcher. It's a completely standalone weapon and it's inspired by a real world British made Arwen riot weapon that fires 37mm baton rounds as well as smoke and tear gas canisters. So it is um, technically a grenade launcher, it does fire smoke and tear gas grenades but it's not used to fire high explosives. It's um, it's a riot, a riot weapon. 
The rotary magazine on the weapon did appeal to me though, and it did remind me of a, uh, a more serious looking, sleeker version of the South African six shot Milcor MGL grenade launcher, which is a bit big, fat, stubby uh, revolver of, of grenade launchers. Our Maverick G6 is a bit of a mishmash between those two weapons, really. So, I think uh, that about covers it. If you're interested in firearms used in the movies, then I recommend you check out the superb Internet Movie Firearms Database at imfdb.org, which is what I used for the, some of the research uh, on this video. So, thanks for watching, and if you are interested in Hostile, then have a look at the links in the show notes below. Until next time, this is Paul from Zosa Games.